What is going on, gunfighters? Saddle up for gunfighter life, where we talk about guns, gunfighting, tactics, differences in platforms, as in today, the right way. With God Almighty at the center, Judeo Christian values, and real world first hand experience. A rapid fire bio. First and foremost, I am a child of God, a servant of God, and a follower of Jesus Christ. That is central in my life, and everything that I do in this podcast is no different. Also, military, Marine Corps combat veteran, law enforcement, LAPD, regular assignments, more specialized assignments, private contractor for a three-letter government agency, I won't say, commander of a tactical team to stop active shooters, professional big game hunter and guide, and a longtime competition shooter. Blessed to win more competitions than honestly than I can remember. With that, let's get into it. The pistol caliber carbine, the PCC, versus kind of the de facto standard carbine, meaning a military intermediate carbine intermediate cartridge that's what we're talking about today your standard carbine like an m4 ish carbine in 556 or something like an ak-47 clone in 762 by 39 i won't be talking about full powered carbines like a scar 17 that's outside of the scope of this for today paratrooper version of a foul that's not what we're comparing today this is going to be a lot to compare just with these two intermediate cartridge carbines versus the pcc and more specifically like the new school pcc i'm not talking the og ppc today like a 357 magnum lever action carbine or a 44 lever action carbine those kind of skew the lines everything today is going to be semi-auto to semi-auto apples to apples for that because when you start talking about full auto you introduce other stuff and most people i think are not thinking about full auto for their day to day so with that with those caveats deep breath let's dive into the world that is the carbine and the pistol caliber carbine versus the intermediate caliber carbine okay there's a lot of places i could start here where i'm gonna start is i have said before and forgive me if You've listened to it before, but a lot of people, this might be their first episode. So, a handgun is a compromise. A handgun caliber is a compromise. Handguns are by far the hardest weapon to master. And I say this as somebody that has won more handgun shooting competitions than any other competition. I have done and cut my teeth in like more precision rifle disciplines. But I have won more handgun and practical handgun and what you might consider drag racing with a handgun like steel challenge than any other handguns are the hardest guns to master they really are it takes a lot of dedication and discipline and consistent practice to master a handgun they are not the most effective tool we carry them because they're what we can conveniently carry on us as far as culture and society and convenience Most of us, unless you're employed as such, don't walk around day to day with an M4 carbine or a Mossberg 590 riot gun slung on your shoulder or across your chest. I certainly have done that and been employed to do that in different roles, but for most people day to day, that's outside the scope. Carry a handgun because it's what we can have on us. And there's a practical limit, without getting ridiculous, like a Desert Eagle, There's a practical limit in what we can carry in a semi-automatic handgun as far as power goes. The PCC gives you several advantages over a handgun. They are more shootable. It is easier to shoot a PCC. It's easier to teach somebody to shoot a PCC. It's a less perishable skill. I'm fairly confident my abilities as a firearms instructor, if you gave me most 12-year-old girls and a solid PCC with a good red dot optic or an LPVO, I could have them hitting man-sized target at 50 yards within an hour or two. Most 
police officers, my training and experience, you're not able to hit silhouette at 50 yards with a handgun, even if it has a red dot optic on it, to illustrate a point there. Long guns are more shootable for lots of reasons. They have more points of contact. They're more forgiving of errors in marksmanship. But there is a reason that no mainline army sends their troops, their frontline troops, their mainline infantry into combat with a handgun. You might carry a handgun. I did in Iraq in the infantry, but it's because it was my secondary weapon. I may have had a rocket launcher or a crew serve weapon, or you get the idea. Long guns have several advantages. There's even a ballistic advantage, although they're the same caliber, putting a handgun round into a pistol caliber carbine for any normal length handgun. Even like what we consider a full size, I would consider a full size handgun a five inch barrel, like a 1911. To me, that's a full size. Anything smaller than that to me is kind of a compact. But even in a longer five inch barrel in a handgun, you have much unburnt powder. A lot of that powder will usually be unburnt in most standard handgun calibers. If you think of gunpowder as simply a store of energy, if you consider that gunpowder reservoir in each cartridge as potential energy that gets turned into kinetic energy, the longer the barrel that is up to a point, and that point would be up to getting really long, longer than most handguns, there's a percentage of that potential energy getting turned into kinetic energy. This is not an actual... I'm doing this to illustrate a point. Let's say I'm shooting a super subcompact 2-inch barrel. Maybe I turn 60% of that potential energy into kinetic, realized actual energy as far as that projectile is concerned. If I'm shooting a 5-inch barrel, maybe I get 85% of that potential energy turned into realized energy on the target. With a PCC, I can get up to and close to, let's say, almost 100%. I mean, nothing is 100% energy is always lost or there'll be some unburnt powder or some powder that just is never going to burn or whatever or the friction of the projectile. But for all intents and purposes, let's say you get close to 100% of your potential realized in each cartridge in a pistol caliber carbine. Let's look at some actual data, some actual numbers. Let's look it up. This is going to give credit where credit is due to Ballistics by the Inch. It's a good resource. I'm not affiliated with them. It's just a good resource. A pretty, what I will call, vanilla load. Federal, 124 grain, Hydroshock. Standard, been around a long time. Got some street cred. It's a little bit older as far as technology, but it's a good proven round to illustrate a point. In a 2-inch barrel, 900 feet per second. In a 16-inch barrel, 1243. If we go to a 5-inch barrel, 1115. If we go to that 16 inch barrel again, one, two, four, three. You are getting more energy round per round than you would with a handgun. So it's not quite the same as a handgun. It might be shooting the exact same round of the exact same box, but you should be getting more energy. Some things to consider. Most projectiles are designed for handguns. They're designed to be fired out of handgun velocities. One of the great things about, let's say the nine millimeter, because it's so ubiquitous today, is that there's been so much R&D, so much research and development that has gone into the way a projectile should perform to optimize it. It's not a very powerful cartridge, but when you kind of eke out all the things you can to balance that penetration versus expansion, you can really kind of make it punch above its weight class, which is why you've seen this big swing away from 40 Smith & Wesson and 45 to 9mm because they've put so much work into making it perform so well. I'd liken it to, and I'm not a mechanic, but a small block Chevy. They're so ubiquitous, they're so common, people have done so much work on the small block Chevys that you can get them to really do a lot, a lot more than maybe they could have when they were first introduced on the assembly line. The 9mm has been around since the early 1900s, but they've really balanced that out. That being said, a lot of that has to do with handgun velocities. It's a balancing act. A lot of that is expansion. And they've balanced that expansion versus penetration. If a round expands too quickly, its frontal diameter increases, which decreases its ability to penetrate. Again, it's a balancing act. A lot of those were made for handguns. If it opens up too quickly, which you might think, that's awesome. But it's not awesome if it opens up so quickly that it doesn't penetrate deep enough to get to the vital organs of the thing that you're trying to stop. 
there is a balancing act there or it's going so fast out of a given barrel that it won't punch through windshield glass or a car door or whatever. So that is a balancing act. And a lot of that research has been done geared towards handguns. So keep that in mind and be judicious about your bullet selection. What are some other advantages of the PCC? I'm going to give you a few. They're fairly gentle, okay? And I think this is a big part of why they've become so popular, just being honest. They are really, really fun to shoot. They're super fun to shoot, probably one of the most fun guns to shoot. They have very low recoil. They are loud. I mean, don't shoot them without hearing protection, but they're much quieter than a comparable-sized rifle caliber, which is nice. Also, tactical advantage if you're clearing a small room like a bathroom or shooting inside of a car. Still going to be loud, but it's not going to be as loud. We've already covered the shootability. And here is a big one. They're cheaper. If you're comparing round per round, if you're comparing like 9mm to even something cheap like a 223. Considerably less. I used Ammo Seek, which is a good little thing. I don't get any kickbacks or anything from them. But they're a good resource. Consider them like the Expedia or the Travelocity for looking for ammo online. And I could find the cheapest 9mm less than half the cost of the cheapest 5.56. And the 7.62x39, there's not quite the disparity in cost between that and 5.56 like there used to be. There's not a giant swath of super affordable surplus ammo that I'm aware of that like there used to be. So it's quite a bit cheaper. Right, less than half at the time of looking it up at the time of this recording. That's a big deal, right? If you want to shoot a lot, if you again, one of the big reasons I think they're so popular is they're a lot of fun. Also, more is not always better. You can shoot these in a lot of places where you may not be able to shoot a rifle caliber. That can be an advantage, right? There's a there's a big reason why PCC is a is a big thing now in USPSA. You can shoot it on the same stages that you shoot a handgun right there's a there's its own division most targets most steel targets and target arrays are not going to allow that for a rifle round so if you live somewhere in a very urban area where you have to go and shoot at an indoor range so there are some advantages to the pcc many many advantages when you compare them to a handgun and some advantages when you compare them to a rifle another one i'll touch on is there's less pressure in a handgun round than a rifle round. So a lot of the things you can get away with, like simple straight blowback designs, you're generally not going to get away with in a much higher pressure rifle round. Something like a high point carbine or a kel Sub-2K are super reliable in a handgun round, but I don't know how big a giant bolt would have to be for a straight blowback in a rifle round, but it would be massive. So you're dealing with lower pressure rounds. Now let's talk about what I would consider like a standard carbine, a M4-ish clone, an M4 family, your standard 5.56. Okay, we're talking apples and oranges here. There is no real comparison ballistically. You're talking a rifle round. A rifle round is much more effective. Going back to that infantry analogy, there's no mainline grunts, no mainline infantry that's sending their army, their Marine Corps into battle with PCCs, right? And there's a reason for that. They've even kind of looked at maybe the intermediate is not powerful enough. And we see this going back to a full power with the M5 and the M7. But as far as the intermediate caliber goes, it is called intermediate because it is a big step up from a pistol caliber. It might be less than a rifle caliber, but it is a giant leap as far as power and range goes over a PCC. Again, it's apples and oranges. PCCs are fun, they can be effective, they can be more effective than a handgun, but they are not. They are not a rifle, they are not even close to an intermediate rifle caliber. To keep, let's say, apples to apples, that 16 inch, which is going to be in America, one of your most common length of barrel, because it's the minimum legal, unless you go with a pinned and welded, you know, extension. But you're talking, again, that pretty standard load, 124 grain federal at 1243. If you look at 16-inch Remington UMC, again, pretty vanilla load, 16-inch at 2943. Again, 1243 versus 2943. Again, you're talking about different grain bullet, but you're not even close in the realm of ballistics. 
it just it's just not there. You can't get there from there. No matter how long a barrel you put on a nine millimeter, it's not going to be a rifle caliber. And unless you go ridiculously short, shorter than is legal, in the five five six seven sixty by thirty nine, you're just not even close. It's apples and oranges. The intermediate cartridges is, is more effective, unless you just go with some hair-brained projectile like you you're going with a varmint bullet like a varmint grenade this is a really good you know semi jacket at soft point in the pcc because you could you could screw up anything and just put the wrong bullet in it you put a frangible in the rifle or whatever but going barring any kind of ridiculous choice in projectile you're comparing good defensive ammo to good defensive ammo or even fmj to fmj is is no comparison it's just not the intermediate is a better choice it's a better choice ballistically it also has a far better point blank range and point blank range doesn't mean like bad breath distance it's got a false connotation i think in a lot of people's minds used improperly by tv or whatever but point blank let's say i'm shooting at a uspsa or idpa torso target which if you don't know what that is it's just a standard like human silhouette target meaning i can point at the center of that target and hit somewhere on that target you're going to have a far greater point blank range with the intermediate cartridge far more than you're going to have with a pcc and i'm not big on crazy long range shooting i don't think it has much applicability in most defensive uses today maybe if the grid goes down or some other scenario or obviously for snipers in the military that's a thing but for average defensive use shooting beyond let's say 350 yards I don't even know of any civilian defensive use, justified use of force where that's ever been a thing. I could be wrong. I'm not aware of any. But I am for a little bit longer point blank range. If you're talking, you know, 125 yards versus 275 yards, that's a big difference. Not that the 9mm or 45 can't be lethal past that, but when you're getting shot at or running from one car to another or running to cover and you have a a snapshot opportunity for turn fire you're going to be able to judge distance and say oh that guy's not 220 yards away he's 280 yards away and i better compensate an extra you know 12.7 inches all that going on when you're trying not to trip and get shot in the chest i think that's a tall order simpler is better red dot center of target slow steady squeeze and continue on it's a much simpler process than all that calculation in your brain when your OODA loop is focused on other things. So that maximum, that farther point blank range is a giant advantage to the intermediate cartridge. Now capacities are going to be fairly similar. You're talking 30-ish rounds for a standard magazine and an AK or an AR. And you're talking, it's easy to get 30, 33 round magazines in a PCC. And you can go with 20 and versus 20 or 10 versus 10 if you're legally restricted unless it's somewhere like Canada where you're talking they limit your rifle rounds to 5 and your handgun rounds to 10 then maybe you got a discussion on your hands and again there are some advantages to a PCC but ballistically again you're talking apples and oranges the intermediate cartridge is the main squeeze for pretty much every infantry at this time every frontline infantry with a few exceptions in the world and it's been that way since the cold war and it's that way for a reason main advantage you're getting is ballistics you're getting a great external ballistics a great advantage in terminal performance again unless you go to some kind of ridiculous scenario but and those are the two giant advantages right they're two really big advantages if you go look at uh the greg elifritz and i have no affiliation with him but i think it was a good study especially for the time at the effectiveness and the i i hate to use the term but for lack of a better one, stopping power of common handgun rounds versus rifle rounds. It's not even close. It's just not even close. Although the capacity might be the same, it's likely you're going to need several rounds from a handgun cartridge to incapacitate somebody. Whereas that's far less likely to need that with an intermediate round. And that coupled with the greater point blank range. Those are your big, big advantages. And those are big ones. That's the reason the military uses those, right? There's Again, some disadvantages, it's going to require generally a more complex system. It's not going to be straight blowback. It's going to be some kind of direct impingement or gas piston system in general or something like that. It's going to deal with higher pressures, which means in general it's going to be much louder. 
And although most of these common carbines don't have a lot of recoil, they're going to have quite a bit of blast and noise, which in my experience as an instructor has as much effect as the actual physical rearward force can bother somebody the noise and blast can bother somebody just as much as the actual physical force because unless you talk about something like a 12 gauge slug a 300 winchester magnum or something in general there's not a lot of physical force if somebody has correct form but the blast and concussion can actually have as much a psychological effect and mostly a flinch is psychological not it manifests itself physically but it starts in your mind it's a psychological thing and that's a real thing Another advantage might be not to get too far off in the weeds, but if you have a PCC and you carry a carry gun, you might have it take similar mags, like a SIG 320 and a SIG 320 PCC or a Glock and a Glock. That is an advantage. There is that advantage, ammo commonality, the one caliber thing. Also, heretofore, we have only discussed really 5.56 and 9mm. You can get PCCs in... 40 Smith & Wesson, which if you talk about a longer barrel, the 40 Smith & Wesson starts to look like a 10 millimeter wood out of a handgun. And you're talking about some ballistic advantage there. Also the 45 ACP. There are other less common calibers. You can skew the lines by comparing like 357 SIG, which is a cool, interesting debate, but not real common, so we're not going to get off on the weeds on that today. You could even go 10 millimeter for a semi-auto carbine. And then again, you're kind of skewing the lines because it's not a real common handgun caliber. It's there, but it's not one of the big three. Kind of skew the lines, but there are other calibers for PCC. And also there are other intermediate cartridges beside 5.56, the big one being 7.62 by 39, which I would argue, in my opinion, is the best intermediate cartridge. It has some disadvantage over the 5.56. It does not have as long a point-blank range, but I think round per round, especially if you talk good defensive ammunition, not just FMJ, that it's a better round, ballistically round per round. So it has some advantages and some disadvantages, but that's a thing you sh- if you decide you want an actual fighting carbine, a standard carbine, do you want 762 by 39 or 556? But either one of those is vastly superior ballistically. Then you might look at like like a 300 blackout, and that skews the lines the other way. Like you compare like a 300 blackout to a 10 millimeter, you know, you're really kind of which attributes do you want and not want. But when you compare straight common, the most common handgun rounds to the most common rifle rounds, like a 9 millimeter versus a 5.56, right? They're apples and oranges. There are advantages and disadvantages to both, again. So I'm not going to tell you which one you should get. It's not my job to think for you, it's primarily my job to give you the truth and let you decipher what's best for you is it a truck gun i plan on doing a whole series coming up i did an episode a while ago on truck guns i think i did two i got more requests for them on truck guns so i'll probably do a series on truck guns is it going to be a truck gun is it going to be a home defense gun for a loved one who has very little firearms experience you mostly want to go and have fun with it let's be real shooting is fun plinking is fun do you mostly want to go and have fun with it and shoot it at the range in which case a more affordable lower recoil quieter pcc that's your if that's your main thing and you may have to one day use it for defense but that's going to skew you one way or the other if you want a go-to you know apocalypse and i don't apologize for being a survivalist like your one long gun and you think that should be a rifle i might disagree but i think it should be a center fire battlefield rifle again there's no comparison between an intermediate rifle caliber, and a PCC. Again, I'm not aware of any mainline infantry, and there are specialty roles, right? I like an MP5. I like them a lot. If you say I'm going to take a private contract, again, if I'm going to go, you say you're going to send me to some, let's say, for instance, I've never been to Africa, but some war-torn place in Africa, get a long gun, right? I don't want a PCC. <laughs> I want an intermediate caliber battlefield weapon, an AK or an AR-15. I don't want the PCC. There's a reason for that. Unless you're talking about some specialized thing, like I've done a bit of EP work, executive protection and VIP stuff, unless I'm going to be like in a vehicle convoy in a major city where my long shots are super close, you're giving me full auto. But again, you're skewing lines there. You get the idea. What are you going to use it for? Which one of those attributes is most important to you? I would say make up like an index card or a thing on your phone 
Write down what's most important to you for the attributes of the thing that you want. Though they're both carbines, they're very, very different. Although you can get both that look like an AR, that look like an M4. You can get one that are even built on like M4 lower receivers or M16 AR15 lower receivers. And you can make them look fairly close, but they're not the same thing. They're not the same thing. Because they look similar doesn't make them similar. I can get a 22 long rifle that looks almost identical to an AR-15. Like from a distance, you wouldn't even be able to tell which one was which. They're not the same. So you can get a PCC that looks like a battlefield you know, weapon. It's not an intermediate cartridge carbine. So although they may look similar, you may put like a mag release button in the same place. They are not the same thing. So you decide which one is best for you. With that, I think we're going to wrap up this episode. And that's a lot. I know it's a lot, but I got the request and I thought it was a good one. Make sure you're like subscribing and I plan on going in deeper depth if you're talking about the truck gun thing. But make sure you're like subscribed if you like this podcast and you want to support. For as little as a dollar, you can support. Consider becoming a patron. Also, if you don't want to deal with patron and you don't want any insider content and you don't want to be part of the insider chat, you can just drop whatever you want on Venmo. There's a Venmo link. Fraction of the cost of a box of ammo, you can support the show. Hopefully you consider this knowledge worth something. Hopefully you appreciate that I'm not taking sponsors here. I'm not like, oh, you should buy the next ABC Company Pistol Caliber Carbine. It's the best because they sent it to me for free and paid me a bunch of money to tell you how great it is. Right? That's, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I want you to be well-armed, well-trained, effective. The prime directive, I believe, of this podcast, these podcasts, to make godly men strong and strong men godly. And I don't want to take a bribe. For a, bli- for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous, the Bible says. If you want to support that, support the message, support making godly men strong and strong men godly without taking bribes, consider becoming a patron, supporting, giving on Venmo. Anyway, with that, let us roll into the tactical tip of the day. Now this came up in our Patreon chat. We talk hopefully about theological stuff and Bible verses a lot, and we talk about guns obviously a lot on Patreon. Uh, And this came up, and I'm not even going to say which gun it was about, but somebody sent me a link and said, what do you think about this gun? And it's, I'm not going to even name the name or the model, but it was one of these new supposedly, and I don't think they use this term, but I'm going to use it because I see a lot of game changer in the AR world. This thing that they do is different than every other thing that's ever been done on the AR. And it doesn't even have to be this maker model or this particular thing. I'm not even going to mention what it is because it's irrelevant to this tactical tip. Again, what do you want it to do? Is this a range toy? Is this just something to have fun with and see how it compares to other ARs? Or is it a life-saving implement? for defense, for survival, for any kind of serious use. In which case, think about, do you want the potentially maybe fractions of a percent better thing that may or may not work that is not proven? Or do you want the proven reliable thing? Do you want this new thing that may be better? Do you want, and I'm just picking one, the Colt 6920, right? The Colt M4, civilian version, the semi-auto M4 that's been proven for decades and decades and decades. And all the little things that may have come up with it, they fixed decades ago. And it's pretty much remained the same because it works. It's not even my favorite platform. The AR-15 is not even my favorite gun. But if you're going to get one, do you want the next new game changer thing? And the answer may be yes. Maybe you're getting it for competition. And the fact that this model has a bigger magazine well or this model has hydraulic buffer tube, and that wasn't even the thing the guy brought up, but you get the idea. If that is going to give you a little bit of advantage, yeah, then that might be your top criteria. But if it's going to be a life-saving thing, if you're going to trust your life and the six-year-old girl that may be there and the people you love the most in this world, their lives, you're going to trust it to this platform? Do you want the new hotness that may give you a slight advantage, or do you want the proven reliable thing that, as far as any mechanical thing that humans make, It's pretty well known and proven and reliable. That's your tactical tip of the the day. Don't get led astray by words like game changer or revolutionary. Because what often comes with those words, those connotations, is unproven. Anyway, that's your tactical tip of the day. Your tactical verses of the day. Because we did a lot of comparison today. 
And it's important, I think, if you're looking at it, again, for a rational life-saving tool, if you just want a fun plinking gun, just get whatever you think it looks the coolest. This is gunfighter life. And not that I don't enjoy going out and plinking and having fun. But judge soberly. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. Also, you shall not have in your bag differing weights, a heavy and a light. You shall not have in your house differing measures, a large and a small. You shall have a perfect and a just weight, and a perfect and a just measure. Also, you shall do no injustice in judgment, in measurements of length, weight, or volume. Make sure you're judging soberly, especially if you or somebody else's life may depend on it. If it's a life-saving tool, don't get it because you have a high school crush on this next cool gun with the cool Cerakote, and look how pretty it is. Get it because it's the best tool for the job, or what you believe at the time of your training and experience is the best thing for the job. With that, thanks for listening. And have a blessed day.